Griff Code. Hello guys, as briefly mentioned in my last Pikmin theme video, the Pikmin games are surprisingly ambitious with their science fiction nature, especially with Pikmin 2 and its Piklopedia. Along with fascinating enemy descriptions, this encyclopedia, as well as Hey Pikmin's indigenous creature log, features scientific nomenclature for each species included. This suggests every creature in the series has a fictional classification to them, that can be speculated and graphed through detailed trees. So today let's do some science as I'll make a tree based on the classification and evolution of the strange organisms of Pikmin. For those who are unaware, all life forms in the real world are categorized under several levels, called clades. Let's start with a basic example, dogs. The categorization starts as something as broad as domain, such as whether their cells have a nucleus. Then along the line is the clade of animals, vertebrates, mammals, carnivores, until it gets as specific as a family including dogs, wolves, and foxes, next a genus just including wolves and dogs, until finally the single species, dog. As you may have noticed, the lower the clade, the more specific it becomes, and the more closely related members of that category are. For instance, a dog is obviously more related to a wolf than a cow, even though they're both mammals, as cows are in an entirely different family in order. So how does this relate to Pikmin? Well, as hinted before, the three lowest clades, family, genus, and species, are given to nearly every enemy in Pikmin 2 and Hey Pikmin, which means this system of categorization, called taxonomy, also exists in the Pikmin world. This part of biology can spawn cladograms, tree-shaped diagrams that reflect the classification of creatures. Although they may look a bit overwhelming at first, the way they work is quite simple. For each clade of an organism, there are two branches representing the clades below it. What if there are more than two, which is often the case? Then an intermediate branch can be made, that doesn't have a specific name. I will be creating cladograms for several families in the Pikmin series, using a basic information given by Olimar. I should also mention that these trees are meant to display something other than classification, a creature's evolution. As each pair of branches not only represents a category, but two species that came from a common ancestor. In other words, each split indicates when a species became distant enough to be classified as two different things. So this tree can also be viewed as a timeline that shows a speculative story of how the Pikmin creatures evolved. Once I define families using this method, I can connect them together with even higher clades. Though it will get more speculative due to the Piklopedia not going that in depth. Since there are so many said families, I sadly won't be able to cover them all in one video, which is why I should keep it small. How about every single vertebrate? First, let's start off with one of the most recognizable families, the grub dogs. The first split would occur with its stated genuses, Oculus for primarily land-dwelling enemies, and Ichthyosa for the aquatic water dumples. After this was established, I then had to decide which group of Oculus is more distinct from the other, as to make the first intermediate split. The obvious choice would be to separate the eye stalker bulbeal from the rest, as it's the only aquatic member of the Oculus genus, and thus differs drastically. Because bulblaxes and bulbears are quite different from common bulborb types, I separated them from a less hostile form of grub dog, creating a third split. Because of its name, at first I categorized the Empress Bulblax as in the bulblax bulbear branch, but upon further thinking, I decided it would actually fit with bulborbs better, with its red and white coloration akin to the common bulborb. Its Japanese name also roughly translates to Queen Chappy, where Chappy is a Japanese name for Bulborb. It also has a morphology similar to the Ice Soccer Bulbeal with its long body, though this might be a stretch. So that's the fourth branch. I decided Whip Tongue Bulborbs are also much different from their presumed close relatives, having a characteristic that exceeds a simple color swap or the addition of hair its long tongue. Conveniently, the three other Bulborbs are all grouped under the same species. Keijiami, suggesting that the ambiguous whip tongue bulborb is the other branch of his split. In the non bulbur branch lies a split between bulblax and bulbear, with the bulbears having a much more active behavior, they never sleep in the more recent entries, and of course, their different names. Dwarf bulbears strangely have a different subspecies than their matured counterpart, but this can be brushed off as a mistake, as Olimar states they're merely juvenile bulbears in the creature's log entry. With grub dogs done with, it would make sense to do the closest related family, the breadbugs. Because they all share the same genus, Pansaurus, it starts out quite linear. I concluded the first split should be between true breadbugs, the more low-shaped blue-eyed scavengers, 
and bulborb mimics, members that have disguised themselves as juvenile bulborbs. Within the branch of the mimicking variant, there would logically be a split between the fiery and non-fiery creatures, as the adaptation to harness fire is a pretty major trait. In the more standard branch would lie the three mimicking bulborbs of Pikmin 2, all subspecies of the same shared species. As for the fiery branch introduced in Hay Pikmin, it too includes a single species with some subspecies, the fiery dwarf bulblax and the fireflat bulborb. Because they are similar in their mammalian nature, I decided to make a tree for blowhogs next. This was much more simple, as I categorized the members that evolved flight in a branch, as Olimar says the puffy and withering blowhog are closely related. That, and they have a much different appearance than the land-dwelling hogs. The two other members are even more related to each other, as Olimar claims the watery blowhog is a mutated version of the fiery one, and is actually a subspecies of it. However, their scientific names suggest they are an entirely different species, so I'll just assume they are just very closely related. The next vertebrate family I will cover are Snavians. Although only two members are seen in game, the family is unique in that it has a third member that is only mentioned by Olimar, the burrowing snara. He suggests that it's very closely related to the burrowing snagrit, it only differs in coloration. This is why I think there should be a split between the strictly burrowing specimens and the pileated snagrit, as it possesses very different behavioral traits than the other two. Going off bird-like families, the next one I will cover are the Mockybees of Hay Pikmin. This one is pretty straightforward. The Maki being Crested Maki we are grouped together, and the elongated crushed flat is in a different branch, due to its much stranger appearance. Moving on from birds, the next family to be constructed are crushed blats. This is just another simple diagram, as it only consists of two members. Amphitubers are a bit more complicated, having three members instead. The two most similar being the Yellow Wallywog and the Fiery Young Yellow Wallywog, as the juvenile variants of both look and act almost identical. The slightly less related branch should be the member simply named Wallywog, as it has a different behavior and is native to caves. With several families well defined, I can now connect them with real world claims by looking at their traits. All of these families are obviously ones of animals, and as mentioned before, are vertebrates, as they don't have exoskeletons. The tricky part is concluding what class they're in. That is, are they a mammal, reptile, amphibian, or something else entirely? For grub dogs, it is debatable whether they're mammals, though I've concluded they are based on several reasons. The Empress Bulblax gives live birth, a trait only mammals possess. The Hairy Bulbor possesses hair, another trait of mammalian descent. And grub dogs in Pikmin 3 have detailed eyes that are greatly similar to the complex eye structure of most mammals. Because both grub dogs and bread bugs have a similar morphology, that is, two legs, no neck, and both have a carnivorous diet, they can easily be grouped together in the same order, which would probably be a fictional one, given they barely resemble any creature in the real world. As for blowhogs, the answer is that they too are probably mammals, given their blubbery hide, as well as sharing the same genus as real world pigs. Whether they are extremely mutated versions of pigs is unknown, though it still is a useful detail. Coupled with this fact and their four-legged appearance, it can be vaguely assumed they are even-toed ungulates, the same order as pigs. Again, this is a stretch as they are in a fictional family, rather than one including pigs in the real world, but it's the best fit I could find as far as order goes. There are a few other families I would assume to be mammals, though they all have a single member. One would be the Panada family, which consists of a stuffed bell bloom, as what else would it be? It seems to store food for the winter like some mammals, and appears to have blubbery skin. But that's the only reasoning I could come up with. Again, I'd put it in a fictional order, since there's nothing in the real world that resembles this amalgamation. A much more easy creature to categorize is the bearded amprat, as it's clearly a rodent that has evolved electric capabilities. With its long fur, it's hard to tell, but when its buck teeth wielding face is exposed, the resemblance is clearly apparent. Another creature I thought would partially make sense to be a mammal is a behemoth phosphat, as it is hair and blubbery skin. However, I couldn't pinpoint a specific order they closely resemble, so this is just another case of put it in a fictional order. Those are all the mammalian creatures I could think of, as nearly everything else in Pikmin are insectoid, given the small size of enemies. However, there are still a few other vertebrate specimens, some of which are birds. To start off, it can be easily concluded that Snavians, commonly known as snagrits, are birds, even with their snake-like bodies. Everything about them is avian. They have beaks, 
feathers and make bird-like screes. Even the family's name is an obvious pun on avian. Despite this, I think they're still bizarre enough to be classified under a made-up order. As for Mockibis, which are obviously birds, I'm going to take a simplest route and assume they are in the Apterigiformes order, the order that real-world Kibis are in. Although it can be argued that the sparrow heads of the Hunt and Peck family are birds, I think their wings and size are too bug-like for this to be true. Both Crushblats and Amphitubers are definitely amphibians, and I'd go as far to guess Wallywogs are evolved versions of frogs. Crushblats, however, don't really resemble frogs enough with their bipedal nature, so I'd put them in another made-up branch. Although not described before due to having just one member, it can be assumed that the Ellipse family, consisting of the Puckering Blino, is in the Actinopterygii class, the class that includes real-world minnows. So there you have it, an evolutionary tree of every single vertebrate in the Pikmin series. If this came out so gigantic, then one including invertebrates would be even more immense, which unfortunately means it would take too long to squeeze in a single video. However, it was certainly fun categorizing and solving a puzzle of Pikmin's strange lifeforms, and figuring out how they're ultimately connected. Perhaps someday every organism in the series will be categorized in one gigantic family tree, a feat the original writers of the Pikopedia would have never imagined.